Today we take you on board the winning boat of the Sea Wing Catamaran's annual owner's regatta held on the beautiful pit water just north of Sydney Harbour to learn from an expert skipper about sail trim on a cruising catamaran, whether it's to race like we are here today or just to get to your destination sooner. So join us as we learn the essential tips and tricks on how to improve your upwind and downwind performance on a cruising catamaran. So we're here at the Sea Wind Corsair Regatta. I'm here with Brett Hotter, our service manager and sailing extraordinaire. <laughs> also skipper of the RYA uh, coaching that we do on some of the Sea Wings. And I thought appropriate time today to talk about sail trip. And Brett, you've been getting some results. Uh, we've got a second and a third. Two seconds. Two seconds, excuse me. Two seconds. This is on a Sea Wind 1160. Yep. It's a slightly older boat, yep. but really nicely looked after. Yep. But why don't you tell us, for those who own cruising cats, sea winds particularly, how to get the most out of their boat performance? Okay. Well, the first thing that we really need to start thinking about is your rig tune-up. Uh, that's your shrouds, four-stay sort of tension. Now you're making good power out of your sails. If you can't convert that power through your rig, you know, to your boat. So that's probably a good thing. Make sure you, you know, get a, a nice, see this yacht rigger and just get them to tune up your, your rig. Yeah, and that's, that's a case of going to a rigger, getting yeah. the correct tension in you, because they generally stretch after a little while that's as well. Right. Yeah. yeah, you can probably see that if you're, you know, you're sailing along in 16 or 17 knots and that lured shroud starts to look a bit like spaghetti, you know, it may be time to start looking like, you know, getting a bit of a tune up. Mm. So the next thing from there, you know, if I'm sailing upwind in, you know, light, light airs, um, main and, and jib, main thing is probably not go too tight on your out haul, just leave a bit more belly in the sail. And with the jib slot, just, just open it up a little bit. You know, you, you want a bit of air around the back of that mainsail to give that mainsail a bit of lift. All right, well, let's let's back so, up there, okay? <laughs> so we'll un unpack some of that information. All right, so we're in light air. So when you're saying light yeah, air, it's we're up, saying up to under- 10 to 12, yeah. 10 to 12 knots, 10 to 12 right? knots. So we're sailing to windward, 10 to yep. 12 knots. So you're saying let a little bit more belly in the sail. That's right. Don't by you? easing your out haul off somewhat. Not, not full ease but just probably medium setting. Yeah, so okay. rather than having it cranked in tight yeah. with the foot against the boom, yeah. it's got a little bit of room to breathe and, and give it some shape. That's right, a bit of what we call camber. Camber. So the air hole controls the foot tension of your mainsail. And what is that doing? So giving it extra shape is doing what? Just, just trying to power the sail up in light airs. And that power is created by more belly, more camber? That's right, a bit more camber. Not, not going excessive, but just enough to just, it's just get a little bit of shape in the sail. It's yeah. got that classic sort of beautiful sail shape. Okay, so that's the sail shape. So we're, we're tweaking the foot of the sail through yep. the outhaul. Yep. Now what about sail trim of the main? Let's focus on the main here for a second. Okay. So upwind in light airs again. Yep, so think don't crank super hard on the main sheet. Like don't pull the boom close to the roof. And then probably the best thing is to ease off a bit of main sheet, create a bit of twist, but on the same thing, bring your traveler up. Okay, so let's look at that a little closer. Yep. So traveler, and maybe we, we go and have a look at the traveler setting. Yep. I think that's a good thing to check out. All right, so now this is this is this is not real. This is set for probably off off the breeze at the moment. But your traveller, let's use an example, right? So you got light airs. Yep, I'd have a bit more main sheet tension on that, and I just bring the traveller just a little bit up to windward. Not a lot, but just enough to centre the boom. All right, so this is we're looking at say a port tack port here tack. at the moment. Yeah. So you've got the traveller up a little bit. And that means when there's pressure in the mainsail, the boom would be centred along yep, the boat. Directly down the centre line of the vessel. Right, okay, that's a good tip. And then your main sheet trim, which we'll see with some shots of the boat, but the main sheet trim, you, you're letting that out a little bit rather than just, having it yeah, super tight. Yeah, that's right. Not, not super cranked on, but just, just firm enough, you know? Right. And, and you'll get it. You'll see it. You can, you'll feel it with the main sheet on the winch. You know, if, it's, if you can play a violin off it, it's too tight. Yep. But if it's just, you know, just nice and firm, you know, and, and, and any time a gust comes, It'll transfer to boat speed. Yeah. Now, what about, we talked briefly about jib trim. Yeah. So what are you doing with your jib? Okay, so 
with our, the, probably the main thing here is this, the Jeep Traveller control line. And in the light airs, light to medium airs, you know, not too close to the mast. You still want a bit of the breeze flying around the back of your mainsail. So I'd probably set it off probably, I don't know, 400, 400 mil, 40 centimetres from so the what, centre what, of the So what bottom. are we going to have a look? What we do here is, you know, get that nice apparent wind angle, say around 37, 38, and adjust your, your jib traveller to suit. Okay, if you're finding that the jib's telling you to sail a bit higher with the telltales, well then it might be time to just open up that slot a bit more. Likewise, if you, the jib traveller's too far out, it might be time to bring it in a bit. So let's just quickly look at that though. So if your main sheet tra uh, telltale, telltale's all lining up, yep. good. Or they're not lining up and your jib is lining up, it, it, that's the time to play with your, your slot. Your travel is here, Because exactly it's right. either in too close or yep. too far out. Yeah. yeah. So you want them all in alignment. Yeah, that's right. In, in the light airs, it's, it's, you don't want to try and pinch too high because any sort of wind shift in the boat's going to stop. So you're better off just opening up the, the jib a little bit, opening up that travel and just trying to keep the boat moving forward. And that's important on a cat, isn't it? You that's know, right. You pinch, you start like on a mono, you pinch a lot. Yeah. On a cat, if you start pinching, you, you lose your boat speed that's really yeah. quickly, don't yeah. you? For the sake of a couple of degrees, it's better off just to be a few degrees off the breeze. Yeah. Rather than trying to, you know, get a bit of height and sail yeah. on the breeze too high. All right, now this afternoon, the wind's building here. Beautiful. We've just had our first race. We've rafted up for lunch. We've got a nice sort of 15, maybe it'll build up to that 18 knots. Okay. So fresher conditions. So what will you change for your sail trim for the fresher winds? I will sailing up breeze with the mainsail, and definitely going to put a bit more outhaul on. Just Tighten try, the foot? Yeah, just try and, don't go excessive, but just probably another centimetre or two of outhaul, just to tighten it a little bit. So it's just flattening the sail out a, little, a little bit, bit taking yeah. that shape yeah. out of it somewhat? Yeah, just, just helps the boat air, acceler air accelerates across the sail, and that'll just help us point out a little bit higher. And your travel will still be slightly extended. Yeah, just yeah. yeah. What about times. your main sheet trim? Will you trim on a, little a bit? bit tighter? Yeah, bring in the leech. Yeah, a little bit tighter. Yeah. The most important thing is get a good set of leech telltales. You really want that air flowing equally over both sides, exiting off the back of your mainsail. I mean, so a good set of leech telltales. And the leech telltales, a little, the little indicator trim, that yeah. go along the very back edge of the, the yeah. sail, and if they start falling away one side, yeah, we need to ease. We need to ease. Yeah. yeah. So that, that is really important, yeah, isn't exactly it? Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. You just need that air exiting off the back of that sail. And how important are looking at your telltales? All the time. <laughs> Focus. Look at your telltales rather than the instruments, right? Yeah, exactly right. Put the covers on the instruments, it just lead you astray. Yeah. I mean, like, the main thing, don't get too fixated if you're sailing. You know, have a look around, especially up here in Pitwater, there's a lot of hills and gullies and valleys. And breeze was funneled through different parts of the of Pitwater, so it's important to look for those shifts. Breeze, like we got a real nice shift up here. Boat went another 10 degrees to starboard, so we're able to pick up another 100 metres. Yeah, so just keep watching those shifts. Yeah. All right, now we talked about main sheet and main uh, trim for stronger conditions. What about your jib? You're changing your jib settings? Uh, probably just if we might even go a little bit further wide on the traveller. I want to try and let that air right through the through the back of the slot. Right. Might even just open up just a touch more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and maybe some trim, more trim on the Yeah, definitely, yeah, just gym. try and pull it down. Yeah. yeah and once again, a good set of telltales on your jib. You don't need as much shape in those sails when you've got more lift created right. by the stronger wind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. the wind's going to do it for you. Just got to try and get as high as you can. Because the importance there is that it's it's about lift a lot for sailing to windward, right? Yeah. Rather than just being blown. That's so correct. creating yeah. that. That lift profile is important. Yep. See how other boats are sailing in front of you. I mean, if you're, if you're coming up behind another boat, have a look at the, the, the twist on his main. See where his boom is centered, you know? And just have a, you can learn from other boats sailing around you. All right, so that's sailing to windward. Anything else you want to say about sailing to windward? No, it's pretty good. <laughs> All right, so sailing off the breeze, because our regatta is a non-extras event, we're not running spinnakers, we're not running uh, screechers, we're not even running Genoa, so we're using essentially factory sails uh, to keep the racing nice and close. So off the breeze on, say, a, a deep reach yep. uh, or dead downwind, what are, we, what are we changing? What are the big changes? Okay, so the first thing when we start to bear away, we really need to start easing those travellers, like get the jib traveller out, start easing the main traveller, start easing some main sheet. Up until such a point where your sail 
can start to distort around your shrouds. So sometimes, you know, just keep your travel a little bit centered and just ease a bit of main sheet. Then by all means, start easing your out haul, create a bit more camber in your sails. And same thing with your jib, just ease that traveler and, and ease the jib sheet. So it's easing sheets, easing travelers. Yeah. So uh, you'll run that all the way to the outer? All the way to the end, yeah. Yep. Is there any other tricks you do with your jib? Oh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> there are some tricks, aren't there? <laughs> That's Barber a fair little, yeah, we do, we do. Because essentially the self-tack is an upwind sort of sail, anything past 70 or 80 apparent, it really starts to lose its edge. But we attach a line down through one of our staunchings, run it through to the back. We actually try and pull the leech down just a little bit. Just and a little just, bit further out, yeah, yeah. out and down. Yeah, yeah. just Tighten try and the leech. grab another point two of a knot. Yeah. <laughs> just it all helps, it all helps. <laughs> What about sails in general? Do you see a real importance in having exotic sails no, versus not really, no. standard sails? No, well, I mean, it's, it's one of those things you don't want to be replacing every eight months. You want to get a good you know, 10 years out of your life of your sails, but then you want your sails to, to do good for your boat. Mm. So, I mean, you've got to pick that bit there in the middle. I mean, so the sails you're running, you've got cruise laminate? Uh, they're a double taffeta. Double taffeta. Yeah, right. but they are similar to a cruise laminate. Yeah, so that's a, a radial cut. Radial cut, style yeah. with a, a square top, mate. No, no square top. No, so the older same, style, yeah. Yeah, roach, a bit of roach in the main sail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're they're not new, are they? No, they're nine years old. Nine years old. Wow. Suppose a good tip. Look after your sails. When you see those people on YouTube who just let that hay and let it fly down. Oh. Every year, probably every eighteen months, I'll take my sails off and take them to a company called Vacuum Wash and they will like a dry clean the sails and you know, get all the bird poo and mud and dirt and whatever mold that's been built up on the sails and just like taking your car close to the dry cleaners and you know, sails start nice and fresh and you just just look after them and you get your, you get life out of your sails excellent all right well some good tips there brad we might, so. uh, we might have another look at this in, uh, in some of the extra sails, some kites and uh, genoas at another another stage. Really good. Well, but, uh, but thanks for your, that. Yeah, it can be your best friend, the spinnakers. Yeah. And there's, there's nothing hard about them either. It's all the same application. All right, we might go for a run one day with the kite. But uh, yeah. anyway, thanks for that. Good afternoon. No have a uh, good race, Savo. I'll, I'll be out there. <laughs> Excellent. watch more on the sea wind range of catamarans, click here. To join one of our sailing courses, click here.